Hey everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming with another video for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And today I'm here to talk to you about crit hit chance. Now, I have a question for you. Are you somebody who, for example, picked the Stabomancer and you said, hey, check it out. He gets a universal 30% crit hit chance. That means 30% of all my attacks are going to crit. Or maybe you went ahead and you got the spell shot and you notice, wow, for five points, I can get 60% and increase crit hit chance of my spells that means 60 percent of my spells will crit right well wrong unfortunately this is not how crit hit chance works the good news is if you watch this video you're going to know exactly how crit hit chance works it's going to be way less confusing unfortunately it is a little bit more complicated than we like it to be but this video has everything you need so again stick around you end up finding this video informative make sure to drop a like and for more Tiny Tina's Wonderlands content and Looter Shooter content, make sure to subscribe and slam that notification bell. And let's go ahead and talk about how Quit Hit works. All right, so in order to understand crit hit chance, we have to understand the idea of a base crit hit chance and how that can vary versus modifiers. So if you go under your skills tab and go under the hero stats, you can actually mouse over crit hit chance and you're gonna notice here to the left, it says brace crit hit chance is 5%. Now this is a universal crit hit chance if the item you are equipping does not notate a specific crit hit chance. So you will always have at least a 5% crit hit chance to do critical damage. Now do note that most enemies will have a crit hit spot. For example, their head is very common for many enemies where you will instantly crit hit. This is outside of that calculation. So again, your base chance is 5%. Now, let's just say you have 42% crit hit chance, like I do here. So the way this would calculate with a base crit hit chance, it would basically go and say 5%, and it's going to multiply that number by 1.42. 42% increase of 5%, which if you calculate that, that is going to be 71 or 7.1% chance way different right it's not 42 percent chance to crit it's 7.1 which may sound very disappointing and in ways it can be now if you have no specific modifiers on skills or anything else that will modify your base chance to be anything higher than that that's where the cal calculation comes in and as you see here for me my ability crit hit chance is 7.1 percent because of that my companion critical hit chance is 7.1% because of that. My gun crit hit chance is 7.1% chance. This is the base here, okay? Now you'll notice for me, my melee attack critical hit chance is 14.2%. My spell critical hit chance is 29.1% chance. And to be more specific, let's look at our inventory and understand why this is the way it is. So one of the things you're going to notice is with a lot of items, you're going to actually see a modified crit hit chance. So for example, here, this frying pan it has a 5% crit hit chance and it says so. Now it has a high critical damage multiplier. That's a different conversation. But the point is this is going to calculate as normal. Now, all of these guns right here, you're going to notice they do not say critical hit chance. When it's like this, it will default to that 5% chance, meaning each and every one of these guns has a, in my case, a 7.1% chance to critical hit. So nothing special. These are not high crit weapons. Now my spells have modifiers. So notice here, this weapon here has an 8% crit hit chance. So this has a different crit modifier. It is more likely to crit hit and all the calculations are going to be based off this number. Now, this can be modified up or down as well. So you'll notice this spell has a debuff and it has 
a lower chance to crit hit chance. So it has a 0% crit hit chance. So these will not crit hit chance at all. But again, you will only notice if you actually look at this item. Now let's take a look at other examples. So here is a different two-handed weapon. This is the Burgeoning Fatebreaker of Cleaving. And notice here, this has a 12% crit hit chance. So the higher these numbers are, the more they're gonna be influenced by those crit hit chances. So for example, if you had a 50% melee crit hit chance modifier total, that would be a combination of your generic crit hit chance increase, as well as modifiers that say, you know, melee increase crit hit chance, then it would be 50% above this 12%. So this 50%, instead of it being an, uh, turning a 5% into a 7.5%, is going to be much more impactful. And this 12% chance is going to turn into an 18% chance, because you're going to get 12% plus 6% from that 50% modification. So much, much more effective on this weapon. Here's another weapon. This is a Twin Soul of the Assassin. This one's even more crit focused and this one has a 17% base crit hit chance. So again, any crit hit chance you're gonna get is gonna be more valuable with this weapon. This is not a surprise. Certain weapons are a little bit more agile, more crit focused. So you wanna make sure you look at your weapons and see if they have any innate crit hit chance, either bonuses or innate natural bases that are higher when calculating whether you're gonna go for a crit hit build or not. Now spells I have found have the largest variable here. So I just have a good example of a couple of spells here. Notice again, here's that vigil, uh, vigil sig uh, sigil, that 0% chance. Here is an elemental blast spell that has 2% chance. But here, take a look. This bonding arc torrent of severity is 19% chance. So this one's huge. So if you get like 100% increase to spell critical hit chance, which for spell shot is very doable, since they can get 60% right off the bat. And let's say you, you know, you combo that with a uh, stabomancer, you can easily get 100% just right there, even before any gear. So this 19% will turn into a 38% chance. And now we're talking. So again, here's one that's 24% chance. Here's a 16% chance, 8% chance. So you want to make sure when you are planning out your builds, find out what the base crit chance is going to be for your focus. If you are basically stuck with 5% or less, chances are investing heavily in crit chance probably isn't going to be the most effective. Now, you can still invest in critical hit damage and focus on guns and shooting the critical hit spots on enemies to guarantee crit hits or use other methods of making sure that you can have guaranteed crit hits. But if you are gonna focus a build on critical hit chance while shooting the body of enemies, make sure you check the weapons that you're gonna use and make sure that base crit hit chance is good so you get the best bang for your buck when it comes to your crit hit chance modifiers. All right guys, that is everything you need to know when it comes to crit hit chance. I hope this enlightens a lot of people. I know there's been a lot of confusion as far as why crit hit chance sometimes seems to be making a big impact on people in their playstyles and sometimes not uh, a very small one. This should answer all those questions. If you have any other questions about how critting works in this game, please make sure to drop a comment below. I'll do my best to answer those messages and answer all your questions. That being said, guys, thank you for all your support. Uh, make sure to join the Discord to communicate with me and other like-minded individuals. Check me out at twitch.tv forward slash Lira Gaming Stream. You can come aboard, get free carries where we do top-end content for, with viewers on a consistent basis. And as always, for more Tiny Tina Wonderlands content and Looter Shooter content, make sure to subscribe here and slam that notification bell to be notified when new videos drop. Thank you for the support, guys. I'll talk to you guys later.